Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to the non-tech section part of the course. In this section, we are going to have just talks and I'm going to give you a few pointers that you need to take care. In this entire section, there will be no code at all. This is all about preparing your mindset about the interview, what to expect in the interview, how to prepare once you are done with the all tech side of it. So again, this section has no prerequisite. You can start it either at the very start or at the very end, however you like. You can watch it before going to the interviews as well. And this section will help you a lot. This section will change your mindset about how you look at the jobs and how you look at the process of getting hired. I'll be sharing some of the behind the scene because I have done immense number of hiring for my startups, couple of them, and for other startups and other big scale companies too. I have been on the other side of the table. I'll tell you some of the truth about that, which some of you are not going to like it, but it needs to be out there and I would like to share them. So again, be prepared. Some of you will not like it at all, but this is something that you need to hear out so that you can be prepared for how the world is. If you're thinking that world is all a fair place and is all sunshine, it is not. And you're going to hear that out directly from me in this section. So let's get started with this non-tech section. And the very first thing I would like to address in this section is, are you ready to apply for an interview? In most of the time, even on the YouTube, I put up a lot of videos like that too. They say that apply as quickly as you can. And I don't think that is a true statement. That is not even a close to true statement. You should not just apply when you just think, hey, I'm ready to apply. No, there are a few check marks that you need to do and you shouldn't be applying just like anything. There is a preparation that needs to be done. Surely, when you prepare and you just apply more, you will be getting more rejection and eventually you'll be learning more. But without even preparing, if you're applying just for the sake of experiencing the interview, you are preparing to fail and that will no matter what happens, will lower down your morale. So please don't do that. Don't just apply because your friend is applying. Don't just apply because you think that I can apply. There will be opportunities always available in all of the companies, including FANG, non-FANG, startup, and every place. So let's do a quick check that are you ready to apply for an interview or not? So let's go ahead and address this situation. First, Please just don't apply because your friend is applying. He might have done another level of preparation without even telling you and you probably haven't done that. If you're going to just apply, you'll be sitting there, will get humiliated in the interview and will walk out. Now, I'm not saying that be afraid of getting humiliated. It's a part of process. I have been done. I have done that many times. I have been rejected with many of the interviews, but it's not like you can just go ahead and apply. Do this check instant. First and foremost, Getting job is a deal. Make sure you understand this. You are trying to get a job and you are trying to increase your pay as much as possible. On the other hand, somebody who is running a business is trying to hire a talent so that he can make the best out of it. So it's a two-way deal. Now ask yourself a question. Am I able to provide something on the other side of the table? If yes, you are definitely ready for the job and you can move on to check number two. But remember one thing, it's a deal. It's a two-way deal and it's not like if you can solve just some of the questions which are interview questions or are tricky question, will you be able to offer something on the other side of the table? Any company, especially in the IT world you'll be joining up is going to be either a product-based company or a service-based company. So are you, are you really able to contribute something on their product or contribute something in their services? If yes, then surely you are ready to make a deal. But if you are just that person who have learned some of the languages and can solve some of the tricky questions which are there in this course, I don't think so you'll be surviving very long. And even if you somehow get hired in that company, uh, you will take a lot of time to learn those skills. So all I'm saying is make sure you are ready to crack down this deal. You are able to offer enough of the problem solving skill. You are ready to offer them something that I can build something. I can build something in your app, in your website. I can do some of the processing of your data or something. I know bits and pieces about handling the IT world. So make sure you do a fair deal. If you think in your mind that yes, I can provide some value to that person, then surely you can move on to the next check. Another check is choosing your sector. You're going to see that people sometimes say that choose your language, go for Python, go for JavaScript. But what I would personally say to you is choose your sector. By the sector, I mean, what is the zone where you want to go? 
Are you really interested in financial tech? Do you really care about what happens when the number crunches in the saving accounts, current account, credit card? What is the tax rate? What is the interest rate? If all of these interest you a little bit, then surely you can go for the sector of the uh, tech where all of this happens. Things like Morgan Stanley, things like uh, PayPal, or uh, things like Stripe, Paytm, Razorpay, Instamojo, and there are a plethora of other companies. Because what you need to understand one thing here is that we surely deal up with the IT as a product, but ultimately this sector actually makes us the whole. If you're not interested in that sector, in that company, a lot of talk will happen regarding these sectors about saving accounts, the number crunching and all of that. Surely you'll be writing code for that, but if you're not comfortable in having these kinds of talk, you won't be surviving in that sector long. Another example can be educational tech. I am more enthusiastic about educational tech. Surely we create lots of apps, we create lots of features, but all the time the talk is happening about how we can serve better to the students. What feature can we bring so that we can make students' life a little bit easier? Surely we write a lot of code, but it's all about happening. The talk always happen about how we can make students' life easier. What are the new policies that are coming up for education and all of that. So make sure you choose your sector. Is it educational tech? Is it a fintech? Is it like hospitality industry? You want to go for OYO or you want to go for something Uber and all of that. So make sure you choose your sector well. And surely there are a plethora of companies, startups and all of that in that sector where you can go. So if you have chosen up your sector which interests you best, then move on to further scaling it down like I want to go in JavaScript domain or Python domain or any other domain. So make sure you first choose your sector. And after that, name out 10 companies in your sector which are not at a FANG scale. If you cannot name them, you need to do a little bit more research of where you should be applying. Anybody, any even kid, school kid can name out these FANG companies. They are very famous. Everybody knows Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, all of these companies. But you can, you, can you name out at least 10 of the startups or new companies which are in the fintech or educational tech or in the hospitality industry? If yes, then make out a list of them. This list will be super helpful. Surely I'm not saying you to skip on the FANG companies, but let's be a little realistic. What if these FANG companies are not ready to hire you? You need to work somewhere. So make sure you prepare a list of all the companies in your sector and are looking for developers in that. So make sure you prepare for that. Last, but not the least, the most important question you need to ask is, what if tomorrow is your interview? Are you really ready to give your interview tomorrow? I expect that if somebody is saying yes, he knows 50 to 60% of the problems that we have discussed in this course, which are basic classic lead code problems or can say interview tech problems. I don't expect you to have 100% confidence. Nobody is and even if I'll give interview, I even don't have that 100% confidence. If you have 60 to 65% of confidence in those tech scales, then probably you are ready. On top of that, are you ready with your resume? Are you ready with your GitHub profile? And are you ready with a couple of stories that you have to tell? And these are not just the made up stories. These are the real stories, like what is the biggest struggle that you have done while building the project that you have mentioned in your resume and is hanging in your GitHub too. You need to prepare these kinds of stories in advance. I will tell you that how to prepare them and how to be very, very ready for them. If you are not ready for your interview tomorrow, then you shouldn't be applying. Let's be very realistic that let's prepare for our best and then be ready to fail. If you're ready for all of this, then probably you are ready for the interview. And also after the section, after completing this section, you'll be much, much more ready, or at least you will have a proper action plan that you can take to be ready for the interview. So I hope this video has helped you a little bit. Let's catch up in another such video. Hi, I noticed that 70% of you haven't subscribed to my channel. It would be really a great motivation for me if you hit that subscribe button. So go ahead, hit that, and now let's carry on with the video.